Close your eyes, lift your hands to him and sing this. There is freedom in the presence of the Lord. Walk by faith. There is freedom in the presence of the Lord. God is the spirit. Let's give him some high praise that he richly deserves tonight. Hallelujah. There's only one God, only one throne. Hallelujah. One God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and thank God he's in us all. How many are thankful for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. How many are thankful for a second chance? I'm going to ask that question again. How many are thankful for a second chance through second birth? Hallelujah. Amen. Where God buries all your past. Hallelujah. I don't have a past. Hallelujah. I said, I don't have a past. The eyes of God. Amen. said, their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. God's got a better memory than you and I put together. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that God chose to forget. Amen. Some people choose to remember, but I I'm glad that God chose to forget. Hallelujah. I once was lost in sin. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Not going to sing any specials. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, I, I'm glad I've got some backup team. This is my God squad behind me. Turn to your neighbor. Hallelujah. Put a smile on your face. Say, I'm glad to be in the house of God. How many glad to be in God's house tonight? Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in God's house. Amen. We're living on his planet. Everything you got came from him. However many years he gives you on this earth, he gave it to you. Hallelujah. And the eternity to come, be it heaven or hell, hallelujah, he made that too. I'm glad that God, hallelujah, has caused our soul to be washed in his blood filled with the Holy Ghost I'm on my way to heaven once you're born there's never a time that you'll ever really truly die again hallelujah I want to spend my eternity in the presence of the Lord hallelujah amen I want to know him I want to walk with him in white Amen. I want to walk with him in white. Amen. Well, how many glad that he chose you? Praise God. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Amen. And uh, I truly believe, amen, that this gospel is to whosoever will. Amen. And whosoever is a thirst. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a universal call, but it's a call to the thirsty. Amen. It's... It's a, it's a call for someone that has been given by God once again. Amen. Hallelujah. The appetite and the thirst for righteousness. Only God can feel that. Hollywood cannot feel that. Internet sensations cannot feel that. Human relationship cannot feel that. Only God can feel the void and the emptiness of humanity. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen. And tonight, hallelujah, I asked God what he wanted me to preach. I always approach it from that uh, angle because this is God's church. 
and uh, uh, God knows what we need to hear, when we need to hear it, amen, and uh, from that approach, I want you to turn tonight to the uh, letter to the Colossians, hallelujah, Colossians, amen, we are delighted to have everybody in the house of the Lord, thankful for these young men on the back, hallelujah, that are helping the church out. Amen. They wanted to work till about prayer time. So, amen. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, thankful for them. And uh, they are getting paid. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, I want to do something for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. How many want to be the, this the most magnificent place when people drive by here they say somebody cares about that church and then when they step into the house of God somebody cares for my soul hallelujah amen praise God amen you know when you when you drive down the road and you see a farmer's house and amen the weeds are grown up and the combines are all rusty and silos are heaved in and hallelujah there's broken down fences amen that farmer's not doing a whole lot for the economy amen but i've driven by places where i've seen the combines lined up and in their own shed and everything looks clean and neat and how many believe god will bring order to a life i said how many how many believe our god is a god of order I'm glad that the earth ain't j bumping into the moon every other year. And meteors that are flying. And they're, they're flying around all the time. People see these meteors. How many have ever seen one? And you say, man, that was a close call. Well, God did that. Science didn't do that. God did that. God shows you how close he can make heavenly things come your way so you can see it amen and not destroy you amen hallelujah but we need a visitation of the lord we do we do need a visitation of the lord and how many how many believe our god wants to help us tonight i believe calvary shows us that how many believe calvary shows us god's concern for humanity colossians chapter number one i'm just going to read a couple of verses of scripture here hallelujah amen colossians chapter number one and we are going to look uh amen uh, verse number 10 verse number 10 colossians chapter number one if you have your bibles if you don't have a bible just look on the wall and uh, they're going to try to keep up with me tonight have an amen from the corner that's the amen corner right there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That you might walk worthy of the Lord and do all pleasing. I mean, believe God wants us to walk worthy and to all pleasing. Hallelujah. The Bible says being fruitful in every good work. Number two, increasing in the knowledge of God. How many believe that's why we come back? Because we want more of Him. We want to be reminded. Hallelujah. How many have ever been taught something and forgot it? And God reminded you graciously. Hallelujah. So, amen. Knowledge is very powerful. And spiritual understanding, hallelujah, is very powerful. Hallelujah. Bible says in verse 11, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. Talking about the power of the Spirit. That's the strength of someone to live for God. To all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. How many are glad that this world is not my home? My stakes, hallelujah. Amen. My, my tent stakes aren't uh, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I want to be ready to go. I want to know his voice. I want to hear that trumpet. 
You say, how fast is it going to be? Jesus said, as the lightning shineth out of the east, even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Corinthians says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, we're gonna, he's going to gather together, hallelujah, everything that's in heaven and in earth, even in him, hallelujah. We're going to meet in the clouds, and we're going to be forever with the Lord. That's my hope. That's the hope of the church. And I'm glad we have a hope beyond this realm here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And look at this. It said, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption. Amen. Through his blood. Hallelujah. Even the forgiveness of sin. Redemption means he purchased us with his blood. It was the price. Hallelujah. We could not, amen, he could not throw money on the table. He couldn't throw silver and gold. He had to pay with his own life so we could be free. He died so we could live. Amen. Hallelujah. The just for the unjust. He came to pay a debt that he did not owe. Don't ever think that God owes you anything. But God gives us everything. Come on, somebody. God did not owe us Calvary. Hallelujah. His love paid the debt. Hallelujah. And we have redemption through His blood. Even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, even in Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is the Creator. The Redeemer is the Creator. Amen. And we're going to look at this. I'm going to try to go through, hallelujah, a few scriptures in this book to give us some insight. And God directed my thought over and over to this book. So how many will pray? How many will preach and pull something? You know, when, when people are hungry, they get seconds. They go, hey, you got any more of that? That's when more starts coming out of the preacher. I'm just giving you a spiritual truth. Hallelujah. Amen. God feeds the hungry. Amen. He gives living water to the thirsty. How many want to lift up your glass to him? How many want to lift up your plate and say, God, I need something from you? God wants to give us something we can use in the days to come. Can we lift up our voice right now in prayer together? And let's ask the Lord to bless everyone that is in this house tonight. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That has been written. Hallelujah. Recorded. We're asking that you write it upon the table of our hearts. Lord Jesus, that you give us something to remember, something to use, that you give power in this place, inward strength in this place, the knowledge of your will, hallelujah, that truth, hallelujah, would be heard, amen, and appreciated, hallelujah. And we worship you, Lord Jesus, because you're always a good God. We ask these things, amen, not because we're good, but because you're good, and by your mercy, you have saved us. And the church said in Jesus Christ's name. And let's praise him one more time. I'll praise him like you're already in heaven. Say, well, I'm going through a trial. Don't make the temporal eternal. And don't make the eternal visitation something temporal. This is forever. This, my God, have mercy. Whew. The Holy Ghost, amen, came to dwell in us forever, that he may make his abode in us forever, is what he said. Amen. Shake hands with your neighbor. Hallelujah. Put a smile on your face. And say, I serve a God of victory. I serve a God that cares. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen.
Amen. And God richly bless you uh, tonight, and you may be seated. Amen, amen. In the book of Colossians, amen, it's a very important book to understand. Uh, it is one that was written, amen, from a prison cell. Hallelujah. Uh, it uh, has many uh, scriptures in common if you read or you have memorized any scriptures from uh, the book of Ephesians. You will find that there are many parallels in this. Hallelujah. Because the letter to Colossians, amen, uh, should have been read to the Ephesians. And the Ephesians to the Colossians. And matter of fact, you can read the last chapter of this book. And there was a letter to the Laodiceans that are mentioned in Revelation. And he said that the letter, hallelujah, from Laodicea be read to you. And the letter that they got should be read into Colossae. Hallelujah. So, amen, amen, hallelujah. Paul believed in preaching the same thing everywhere and in every church. He preached Holy Ghost to every church, hallelujah, that he went to. He preached Jesus' name baptism, amen, every church he went to. He preached that there's one God and his name is Jesus every church that he went to. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can, you can also read that in the book of Corinthians. He said that I preach in every church everywhere. Now, what we have read Amen. Thus far, hallelujah, in the book of Colossians, amen, uh, this book is denouncing a false doctrine of Gnosticism. And you say, what's Gnosticism? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hallelujah. Gnosticism, amen, was a theory that all things, uh, amen, that were visible and tangible were evil. And so that Jesus could not be God because he had physical, amen, hallelujah, tangible. They felt him, amen. They touched him, praise God, hallelujah. And uh, others said that he was merely an angel. Well, angels don't have blood. And he denounces, uh, hallelujah, amen, that Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh. And this doctrine shows uh, that he came with blood. He redeemed us with his blood. He's the king of the angels. And as a matter of fact, Hebrews 1 said, let all the angels of God worship him. And might I add, all creation ought to worship Jesus because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, we're beating the rush. Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue is going to say that Jesus is Lord. He's the mighty God. When God said, as I live, what a powerful, he was swearing by himself in his own eternity. As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow unto me. And every tongue, come on, if God said it, it's going to come to pass. I want to do it tonight. I want to praise him tonight. Amen. Well, pardon me, I just got a little excited about that. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him forever. This is my joy. I love praising God. You don't have to jerk me out of the pew. You God's done so much. He's healed my body. He saved me from things I could not save myself from. He's answered prayer when no one else heard. If you want to know he's God, everybody listening, if you want to know he's God, amen, just pray a thought to him sometime. I said just pray a thought. And you'll know that there's a God that knows the hearts and the thoughts. Come on, somebody. I've had him answer prayers of my thoughts. Because he knows the heart and the thoughts of. Matter of fact, amen, one time they, he answered their thoughts. Because, uh, amen, amen, they said in their own heart. And said, who can forgive sins but God only? 
Jews are one God people. I want you to understand, they're not confused about the deity. They know that there was one God that brought the people out of Egypt. There was one tabernacle. There was one pillar of fire. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus not only forgave sin. Amen. And this goes with our verse in our text here. And I'm, I'm just connecting a few things here. Amen. But the Jews, hallelujah, could not believe Amen. Even though God had given them prophetic structure to believe, amen, that God was going to be manifest in the flesh. He was going to be born of a virgin. He was going to be Emmanuel, God with us. Hey, if this turns out to be a one God, hallelujah, message tonight, hallelujah, you're in a one God church. God said, is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. And I think he knows more than anybody else. Amen. Hallelujah. I have and I am the Lord and beside me. There is no Savior. Hallelujah. So, in this letter, it is a, a direct confrontation to Gnosticism. Amen. That Jesus was merely an angel. You can even read this in the book of Hebrews. Uh, hallelujah. Now, how that he makes angels. Uh, hallelujah. Spirits. They're without blood. Hallelujah. But God, amen, chose the blood. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Your life is, amen. If you, if you talk about the really Bad diseases, they're blood diseases. Some of the most painful things that can happen to humanity in the human sphere and spectrum of pain is a broken bone because that's where the blood's produced. Amen. But we are bone of his bone. We, when you get in the body of Jesus Christ, that's where life is. Because inside of the body is where the blood flows. I said, this is where the blood flows. And can I tell you, it's flow. That's why we. I want to be where his blood flows. That's what gives us strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me just give you just something you probably know, nothing great and profound. But where man gets strength in the physical realm is through basically two things. Amen. Food and rest. And when we come to church, we get fed. The Word of God is our fuel. And the Holy Ghost is our rest. Come on, somebody. That's why we need to come to the house of God. We need to be fed and we need the rest. And this is where we're strengthened with might by his spirit in the inward man. We've got to understand that God is all power. God is the spirit. God is all power. Romans 13, 1. All powers of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. It said if we resist the power, we resist the ordinance of God. And if we resist the ordinance of God, we receive damnation. If we resist the power, if we resist the word, there's only one. The word will save you or it will condemn you. Come on. I'm preaching to somebody. If you want to be saved, God wants to save you. Through that power. You can read this talking about the government of God and it's actually talking about the ministers of God that are given to thee. Hallelujah. I almost preached on it tonight, but we got this direction here. All right? Amen. Now, it's a good government because, hallelujah, this letter shows us something, amen, that we need to understand, hallelujah, amen. Uh, how, many, how many have rich parents? Anybody have rich parents that are just leaving you a legacy? For those that think, amen, hallelujah, amen, I'm rich, I'm spending my kids' inheritance right now. <laughs> Can you say praise the Lord? Man, that did not go over too well. 
like a crocheted bathtub. Now, amen. So, hallelujah. When it talks about inheritance, amen, God gave us the inheritance of the saints in light. Let's go back. Amen. We're going to stay in Colossians. So, uh, amen. In this, in this letter, hallelujah, amen, to be an heir, you've got to be a part of the family. Don't show up to the reading of the will of somebody else's family and expect to get something. They might ask you, what's your name? Hallelujah. And uh, amen, if they're reading the Smith will, hallelujah, and your name is Trebolinsky, you're probably not related. Amen. Hallelujah. But God gave us, amen, this testament, which is called, amen, hallelujah, the will and testament of God. And uh, hallelujah, in this testament, you've got to do some things to get in the will. Amen. And so since God wants us to be sons and daughters, he caused us to be born again. He gave us his blood Gave us his name. This is why he said, if you want to get in my will, my heaven, if you want to enter into the gate, you've got to be born of the water. That's the blood and the spirit. You've got to get a new father. You've got to get a new source of strength. You've got to get a new direction for your life. He provides it all. Amen. Praise God. So, that's how he gets us. Amen. And, John even says, what manner of love has been bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about it. To be called the sons of God. You go around this city and you tell somebody I'm a child of God or a son of God. You're going to get some looks. But it's true. You're not telling a lie because... If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. He's a new creation. We got a new master Sunday night. That's my God. And so he made us. Hallelujah. Amen. He put us in the will. As a matter of fact, when you read, how many are familiar with the Bible? How many have read the New Testament? Anybody? Hallelujah. Amen. Where it talks about the spirit of adoption. Amen. Adoption is when you're not a child that is born, hallelujah, but you go through the adoption process. Amen. And it was somebody else's child, but you're going to pay for them so it can be yours. The world may not have wanted us, but Jesus did. Your high school class said they're not going to succeed. But Jesus said, oh, yes, they will. Because if God be for us, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? And so, so in an adoption process, you go through and you have your choice of all these children. And it depends on, hallelujah, if you're wealthy, you can get two or three. And if you're really wealthy, you can get a number no man can number. My God, brother, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's about time to shout on the streets of gold, not just here at 3102 Showman. Partakers woo, of the inheritance of the saints in light, partakers of the divine nature, having escaped, come on, we're partakers of heavenly things. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't pity this guy sitting over here in the corner. He's got more of the word of God in him than he'll just smile at you, but he's got books of the Bible on this. He comes up and says, Brother, I got the book of Colossians. I got the book of Praise God, but that's where I started. Come on, somebody. 
I want to get the word of my Father, the promises, the commandments, because I want to please my Father. Walk worthy of the Lord and do all pleasing. Everybody say all pleasing. So you got to find out what pleases and what displeases. So, amen. In this, back to the inheritance of the saints in light. God is light. The world is in darkness. He goes on to say, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us. The same word that is used when we're going up is the same word of how fast he can put us in. You can come to a church weary and sad, without hope, depressed, and in a little bit of time, there's a translation. And you leave with joy. You leave with power. You leave with heaven on your mind. You leave full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He came to buy a church. And he could only use his own life. Hallelujah. We needed a human, victorious representative. He's denouncing, hallelujah, Gnosticism because they believe that all matter was evil. And that puts people in two spheres in that, hallelujah, because either they believe in punishing the body, asceticism, and he mentions this in the book of Colossians, the second chapter, and he even mentions angel worship. He's, this preacher is hitting on some things, because angels worship him. And God created things and said, it's all good. I'm talking what God made, not what man put together. Come on, somebody. He satisfies our mouth with some good things. Does anybody want to give him glory tonight? Anybody want to praise him with understanding? So he's got to purchase a church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The other part of Gnosticism. Amen. Before I get off of that, and we're going to move on. Probably won't mention it again. Amen. Hallelujah. Was, uh, amen. They believe, amen. The other extreme of this belief is, uh, amen, is uh, that your body, since it is evil, it doesn't matter what you do with it, and people go amoral with it. You can be immoral with your, that's where a lot of people are at today. Whether they understand it or not, that 2,000 year old spirit, is creeping in. There's no consequence for what I do with this body. I'm here to tell you, amen, we shall all give account for the things we do in our body, whether good or bad. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, you need to be the preacher that's got the fear of God in him. He made that body not to Don't buy into this world's Immorality and amorality. Well, they have no moral, no boundaries. They're preaching life without consequence. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. There is a Lord of harvest. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's time to get out of sin and start sowing some good seed in your life so you can have an expected end. He'll wash away that sin. He'll wash away that old sinful idealism and past. Amen. So, God had to purchase a church. Amen. And Acts tells us this. He purchased the church with his own blood. Can I have an amen? amen. We've read it. Amen. And whom we have redemption through his blood. Hallelujah. Hebrews said that the high priest could go into the holy place, but not without blood. Nobody, I'm trying to be as plain as I can, hallelujah, but nobody is getting into heaven and staying there. 
I've got news for everybody. Everybody's going to heaven, but not everybody's going to stay there. Who's going to stay there? Those that didn't think they were going to get in to that holy place without blood. Not without blood. That priest didn't say, well, I got the priestly garments. Hey, Amen. I'm just going to stand there and talk to God. God was looking for the blood. I said, God is still looking for the blood. In Old Testament, the Passover, when I see the blood, I will. Come on. He's looking for a house that believed the man of God. You need blood on your house. All these patterns of the Bible point to the greatest blood. It wasn't spilled. That means carelessly. It was given. He didn't spill his blood. He gave his blood to redeem us, to purchase us, to redeem us from all iniquity. Amen. Purifying himself. Hallelujah. It redeems and it purifies. How many want the pure blood of Jesus to purify your life? Now, how, I've got to get this through here, okay? The blood teaches us that we're not going to get into heaven because of how good we are. Preaching Baptism in Jesus' name is so absolutely necessary because there's only one man that conquered sin in the flesh. And it wasn't me. And it wasn't you. And it wasn't anybody on the... Come on. It was Jesus. And he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now, how many believe this? Amen. Hallelujah. The soul that sinneth shall die. The man said, you can offend at one point and be guilty of all. But if you find a Savior, hallelujah, amen, that was guiltless of all, he could be a Savior of humanity. He was tempted in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. I'm preaching a sinless Christ that conquered everything that you and I face. That's why when you get baptized in Jesus' name, you're going to have victory over things that you could not have prior it's not you, it's him. Amen. Hallelujah. Got to hurry. Amen. Redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And then it points, amen, to who Jesus is. Everybody say he is the image of the invisible God. Amen. God is a spirit. But God was manifest in the flesh for us. God's sinless. God's holy. Angels cry holy. 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 The Old Testament, there was a tabernacle. And behind the curtain, there was two angels. And their wings touched. And they weren't looking at the one that was coming in. They were looking for the blood. Because that basin in the Ark of the Covenant was where the blood was going. That's why it says angels desire to look into these things. Amen. And the thing about it, I want to tell you how blessed we are. Amen. Angels, when they sin once, bam. It's over. It's done. That's why they look at us. And go, how can this person, I'm not given no license for sin. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And the message from the Savior is, go and sin no more. Come on, somebody. I want to show God my appreciation for his blood by going and sinning no more. Man, now, how many are with me here? Hallelujah. First John 2 and 1. Thank you, sis. Going back to Colossians here. Amen. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Amen. 
In God's eyes, amen, when God made man, he made man in his own image. When you saw Jesus, you saw the image of God. You saw the second Adam. The first Adam was made in the image of God. God breathed into him, and he became a living soul. But Adam was not God manifest in the flesh. What, and let me just quote from the book of Romans, for by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. That's referring to Adam. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. How many are thankful? Hallelujah. We weren't born righteous. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me, he said. You know what we needed? We needed a sinless, amen. We needed a sinless father. And so enters into, amen, not only prophecy, but fulfillment in these scriptures. Jesus is the word made flesh. He is the beginning of the creation of God. In other words, uh, amen, when it says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Amen. How many have read that? John chapter number 1. And then it says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And in the gospel of John, amen, John shows Jesus is God. He doesn't go into genealogies of Abraham on down. He goes back to Genesis. The God of Genesis is Jesus. Come on, I feel the whole. Is anybody apostolic? Hallelujah. And that's how John introduces Jesus as God. Hallelujah. Now, that's what I want to do tonight. Amen. Now, through the blood... And this is one of the most important revelations is to know who Jesus is. Because if you know who Jesus is, you'll know that it wasn't just the blood of another man. It was God that purchased his church. When you get the Holy Ghost, it's not just another gift or spirit. It's God himself. You can say amen. We're going to get to the scripture that says exactly that. Hallelujah. Amen. And Paul states this. uh, Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, uh, amen, he is before all things. Speaking of the pre-existence of Christ. That's why he could say, before Abraham was, I am. He could say, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven because he was in heaven. That's why he could say, you are from beneath, I am from above. That's why he could say, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Come on, I'm not. God can be in me. He can be in you. He can be. He's an omnipresent God. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now, this gets pretty complex. Amen. Before man, they discovered, amen, what bouncing. And what atomic bombs could do by colliding, amen, they should have considered that there was a God that made these atoms. And the structure of the, it's incredible. We don't think about it. Amen. But there is, there is literally beyond human count. Hallelujah. Amen. Structure of God when he spake these things into existence. We can drive, amen, on and on and on and on, on a earth, hallelujah, that was created by the spoken word of God. Say, what's in the middle? The lake of fire is in the middle. And then there's the strata level. Come on. And this is why God created this to even show us, hallelujah, the earth wants to claim you. Earthly things and earthly sins want to claim you. And those that, hallelujah, are overcome by the world 
are taken not just to the earth, but even lower. But he that overcometh is going to stand, come on somebody, is going to stand on a new heaven and a new earth. He's going to inherit all things. And the only way we can do that is the one that overcame. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto death. Why is that? Because Jesus didn't love his life. He loved the church, and he gave his life for the church. Oh, let's clap our hands to him. Now, got to hurry, I guess. Now, he is the head of the body. So it shows there's one head and there's one body. He is the head of the body. And what's the body? The church. That's why you don't mess with the church. Soul, soul, why persecute us? You're messing with my pride, Bubba. I thought I was just messing with old Zacchaeus. You're messing with my body. We can talk, but don't mess with the body. Don't mess with the body. Now, did Jesus say it? He did. He said, why persecutest thou me? Jesus was in these believers. And can I tell you, when anybody messes with a one God, apostolic saint of God, or a minister, touch not mine anointed, do my prophets. He said, don't touch my body. Don't touch the holy thing. God's on the inside of there. You couldn't just touch the Ark of the Covenant and let, and then you still couldn't touch it. It had to be on the shoulders and the burden of the one carrying it. And then they gently laid it down in its place. Hallelujah. Reverently. Amen. Now, these things are teachers. Amen. Hallelujah. And yet, even though, but people that don't understand this, hallelujah, crucified Jesus. They took the body, hallelujah, amen. And I'm telling you, this showed that he was God. Because the people, hallelujah, that did things to him, he gave the Holy Ghost. Paul was killing his church, and he could have killed him, and he gave him the Holy Ghost. Do we serve a good God? Come on, somebody that's... Amen. So I wasn't killing the church. We'll just read the book of Romans and read that list and see how many check marks you have in Romans 1. And it concludes that teaching with, uh, they that do such things are worthy of death. Come on, somebody. Worthy of death. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. God didn't have to let us live. He's a merciful God. He didn't save us because we were so good. He saved us because we cried to Him. He heard our cry. He saw our affliction. And it's hard to convey this kind because in a get-even, wrath-laden world, it's hard to convey this to people. How many have ever had somebody, amen, punch you and you just say, I'll punch you back? Or while they're trying to punch you, you punch them. The wrath of man does not work. The righteousness of God. And here is God that could have called for legions of angels. Because this political figure said, don't you know that I have the power to release you? And he looked at that old guy and he said, you would have no power except it were given thee from heaven. All powers of God. This is mission impossible. You're not going to be able to release me. 
because this is a prophetic moment. I came to give my life to this hallelujah world to save them from their sin and give them the greatest option and choice that man could be given. Can I tell somebody, you need to choose Jesus. You need to choose life. You need to choose eternal life. Firstborn from the dead, then in all things. Everybody say, Jesus. Every service, he ought to have the preeminence. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Next verse. For in him, it pleased the Father. It said it pleased the Father that in him, hallelujah, should all fullness dwell. Let me just explain that to you. Every divine attribute of God is in Jesus. He can forgive sin. Devils cried out and said, we know thee who thou art, the Holy One. They didn't call him a trinity. The devil doesn't believe in a trinity. You believe in one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble because there's only one name. In my name shall they cast out devil. The devil knows that Jesus conquered him. Amen. Power over spirit. Power over nature. He spake to the winds and the waves. What manner of man is this that even I'm not talking about hey guys would you shut up and lightning coming back but immediately it said what is God said shut up immediately the boat was on the shore so the storm but when God said all right it's over can I preach to somebody that's in a storm? You can be in the midst and then the next. Hey, we're going to that golden shore, honey. In a moment. In an immediate. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. I love him. God's a good God. I say all fullness. Amen. Hallelujah. He can sit on the ground and make an apple. Right. You might be there and grab a banana stand. You can make that stand out of some stuff. <laughs> you get my head dogs right there. <laughs> sit in the boat. You ain't coming in with it. No, they can give you glasses. God can give you your sight back. Come on, somebody. One of the miracles of introducing Jesus as God in John was, amen, the man was blind. He gave him a brand new eyeball in the dirt. Then he said, go wash, go wash, go wash. Because in John 3 and 5, when you get washed, you start seeing like you've never, you'll start reading the Bible like you You'll start seeing the signs of the times, hallelujah, that it's homecoming time. You'll look at things altogether differently. And then when you get God on the inside of you, man, this is this is this is powerful thing. Think about it. To have the creator on the inside of you. Amen. Now, I could preach. Man, that will preach. Now, hallelujah. Having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Everybody say peace. Verse 21. You that were sometime alienated. You believe in aliens? Yeah. People that are alienated from the. From the word of God, alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them in one place. 
And in this place, hallelujah, your mind by wicked works. Satan had our mind. Satan had our success and value system. He showed us that a man was this and this and this. Come on. But the greatest man you'll ever meet is Jesus. The greatest father you'll ever know is Jesus. The greatest doctor you'll ever know is Jesus. The greatest counselor you'll ever know is Jesus. The greatest provider you'll ever meet is Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. I got it. I wanted to get through this. Amen. I really, I really want to get through, amen, a part of this. Hallelujah. Now, he goes into this, and let's, let's jump down into this. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God reconciled us in the body of his flesh through death to present us holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. In God's sight, for by one offering you're perfected forever by that blood. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. It's a perfect blood. It's a perfect plan. Let me tell you, this ain't man's plan. Matter of fact, when God, when they were making altars, God said, you don't lift a tool on it to pollute it. Come on. Hallelujah. This, amen. When God said, make the ark. As a result of one man's obedience. Matter of fact, without Noah's obedience, we would not be here listening to this message. And it's a sad day when giraffes will get in the church and lions will get in the church and all kind of animals and beasts are in. Come on, somebody. How God can lead an animal. Whew. Amen. He can use a rooster to crow and convict his Pentecostal preacher. Come on. Come on, somebody. God's a great big God. Hallelujah. Amen. And oh, let me just say that because I, I felt something come back. Amen. Hallelujah. God, man, God used that rooster. And Peter didn't go, hey, you was for supper tonight, buddy. What are you doing trying to convict me? And I believe in this little mind said, you can eat me, but you ain't going to change what I did to you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Don't get mad at the person that brings conviction and revelation. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to feel bad before you feel good. Amen. Hallelujah. That's just part of it here. So, amen. Let's go on. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul speaks of the dispensation of God. Hallelujah. Given to fulfill the word of God. Amen. Everybody say God came in the flesh. God put his spirit in. And blood in a man. And God came to put his spirit in us. And in verse number 26. And note this carefully. Even the mystery which hath been hid from generations. Nobody knew like God what he was going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. But is now made manifest to his saints. When it talks about ages and generations, it means, hallelujah, that they did not fully realize that God would not just come in the flesh, but he would put his spirit in human flesh and give the same victory, the same power over the spirit world. Come on. Make them worthy of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you something. How many have ever 
had to wash to go in to see someone that was sick at a hospital. You had to wash. And sometimes it's serious enough you've got to put a gown on. And if you don't want the gown, then they, they call these guys and say, hey, this guy doesn't believe in washing. <laughs> and he wants to get in. Some of them nurses can get pretty mean, too. How many have ever met a mean, mean mer- nurse? Mean nurse. <laughs> They'll make you stutter, won't they? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not as drunk. <laughs> amen. As you think I am. Now, amen. In this, in this, amen. Paul says, hallelujah, and this is so important. He leads up and he shows, amen, that Jesus is the image of God. Can I have an amen? amen. What is the riches of the glory to us is Christ in you. Everybody say, the hope of glory. The only hope for humanity is Christ in you. The singular hope of going to heaven in the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. If he dwells in you, that spirit's going to take you from earth to glory just like it did Jesus. I'm closing. Hallelujah. I say this is the mystery. But it's not a mystery to us anymore. Because we got the clues. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say Christ in you. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Whom we preach. Warning every man. And teaching every man. That we apostolic ministry may present every man. Hallelujah. The only way that I can present somebody righteous to God. Is to get them baptized in the righteous name of Jesus. Feel with the righteous spirit of God. You don't want to go to heaven on your own merit. God represented us at Calvary. Amen. I said God is the perfect man in the flesh that would represent us. Hallelujah. And become, hallelujah, our advocate. Amen. Because he knows what it's like to feel the pressure of sin. He knows what it's like to feel hatred. He knows what it's like. Hallelujah. Amen. Read the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He, amen. All of the, all of the things that, hallelujah, humanity went through, Jesus went through for us and came over on the other side with victory for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm closing. Amen. It's straight up nine. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In the second chapter, and I'm closing with this. He points, uh, and hallelujah, to Jesus as the remedy, the answer. He says, let no man spoil you or rob you. In our vernacular, don't let anybody rip you off. How many hate to be ripped off? How many would hate to be ripped off of eternity? Let no man spoil you through philosophy. Vain deceit. Help me out. Hallelujah. This is greater than tradition of men. Come on. Hallelujah. We want the word of God. What does Jesus have to say about baptism? He said to preach repentance and remission of sin in his name. Man, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Next verse states this and stand with me. Hallelujah. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Once again, hallelujah, he is saying everything you need is in Jesus. And then it goes on to say, buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. In this epistle, this letter to Colossians, Paul uses over 35 words that are never used in any other letter. Can I tell you, this operation is necessary. 
This operation takes place in Jesus' name baptism. Hallelujah, where God washes away your sin. And it says you're complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. You're baptized. Hallelujah. Not just to wash away your sin, but so that you can be married to another. So you could change masters. I got, come on, somebody. All of the teachings. Hallelujah. Amen. Of God's word. Dovetail. Amen. Hallelujah. At the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands to the Lord right now? Hallelujah. Jesus is your answer. He's the answer for your marriage, your family, your children, your eternity, your, your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The stars are in His hands. Your life is in His hands. Can you lift your heart to Him right now? Can you let your voice be heard? Want to open this altar tonight? Hallelujah. Don't let anybody, hallelujah, get you so caught up in the pleasures of this world that you miss, hallelujah, amen, the rapture of God for His people. Hallelujah. He's gathering the people right now. He's filling people with the Holy Ghost, washing away their sin. Hallelujah. Amen. He is building the greatest building, putting together His body all over this world. Hallelujah. The choice is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God only gives you so long to make that choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let's find a place to pray and talk. Talk to Him, right? In Jesus' name, beware lest any man rob you of that crown of that heaven. Hallelujah. Don't let anything, amen, come between the goal of making it to heaven. Let that be the thing, hallelujah, that is the foremost in your life. Seeking first the kingdom. Hallelujah. Seeking the path to glory. Jesus name. Jesus we can't let a most soap of it. For the world today. Lay down that sin. No sin will separate. Jesus God came to reconcile through sinless blood. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. He's the way, the truth, the life. Jesus is the answer Singular. for the world today. Above him he is the there's door. no other. Jesus the is road. the way. Every knee shall bow to him. For the world today. Every tongue. 